Now in my previous video as well, I was talking about the opportunities for Chile in geothermal energy that they can tap into if they find a way how to build easy power plants for geothermal energy. So just um, as far as I could see right now, the technology for geothermal uh, energy plants is mostly drilling two holes and then you need to fracture this you drill down a certain depth so it might be like up to several kilometers and then down at this kilometer with pressure you um you fracture the stone so that you have more some kind of sponge like stone so you can push the air, the water in between the the gaps which then obviously you know, which has a benefit that you spread the water out, you have a wide, way higher contact area and that means that the heat from the stone can warm up the water wave a lot faster as if you just have the water going on the, in the same hole and then right out not right next to it which would decrease the wood which we increase would increase the time that the water needs to take on the the temperature so you have one hole where the water goes in and then the second one where the water gets pumped out and then you have different technologies on top to um, extract the seed energy out of out of the water but just you can either have like the water is already hot enough that when it comes out of uh, the earth that it can already be made into steam so you have to have this transition from water into steam because steam uses a lot more space which means then the steam energy gets translated into pressure which can be used in a turbine to get um a torque and this torque is then used in a generator to generate electricity so and for if the water is not hot enough for that you have it i don't know which like 30 or 40 50 70 degrees celsius then you can have another medium which has a very much lower boiling point which means that you have a close more or less closed circle yeah for the for the water which heats up the other medium which then turns into steam and you use this uh, steam pressure then with the turbine to generate electricity and uh, then there are also other power plants i think the third one was where you have a steamer itself where you let uh, where you force an expansion of the the water so that also works already with a little bit lower temperature water higher than 70 degrees but you don't have to have like this very high pressure water when it comes out obviously the temperature of the water that comes out relies heavily on your location and how deep you drill and the deeper you drill obviously the more difficult it becomes so the problem now is, as far as I know, is when you drill, drill down and then you do this fracturing and you have it go up, is that you destroy the the yeah the co 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 cohesion yeah the cohesion between the stones, which may lead to earthquakes and more earthquake prone area. They even had this in Switzerland where they were drilling and doing stuff like this and then they had an earthquake, a three point something, which is in Chile nothing, so you barely would feel it. But for for those areas it was already enough because nobody is really building their houses halfway flexible or uh, earthquake proof and then you directly have a lot of damage. But here, of course, in an earthquake prone region, it can mean that the resulting earthquakes are more numerous and also have a higher magnitude. And you don't really want that. So one of the hurdles that, that I think 
might be necessary to overcome is to not need this fracturing. So you either have to drill deeper or be okay with not having such a big surface area or create the surface area in another way. So you want to make some kind of capillaries where the water can flow through but that, that do not obstruct the cohesion of the stone. So when you have this cohesion of the stone you have a big area, big three-dimensional area that, that gets fractured which then can't really take any stress anymore but if you maybe drill I don't know five or ten if you have your well that goes down and then separate it maybe into five or ten drills and then go to the other out to the outlet and maybe that would still allow the stones to have enough cohesion to be resistant against earthquakes um, other than that, maybe it could also be done that you only drill one well where you send in the water on the outside so that the water flows down on the surface of it to the stone and then you have one pipe in the middle where the heated water gets then extracted again. That would have the benefit of just drilling one time which means that you could afford to dig a little bit deeper because you um, have a well anyway you drill anyway and then you just contact a deeper depth which is then resistant also against it so you might have to scale down your power plant a little bit but you could then do it a lot faster and also with, with a little bit less risk. You, you, you would have to see like how much energy you can then actually get out of there. Um, other t other hurdles would be so yeah just just to recapitulate to have this stress fracturing of the stone with the with the air with with the water which leads to loss of cohesion between the rocks there has to be a, a better chance and an opportunity to improve this type of power plant. Another possibility would be to improve it is to improve the drilling method because right now it's very very expensive to drill down. So how that goes you have a drill bit and then you have a tube that gets, gets put on top and then outside like you have this drill tower then you put in the drill bit you put on a tube of it and then you have a, a drill engine on top which turns it so you turn the whole tube you you drill down and then when you have drilled down for the length of one tube you disconnect the engine pull it up you get a second tube connected to the first one and then put the drill engine on top again and drill down for one length. And then you disconnect again, take a third tube, put it on top, drill it in and then with that you drill down more and more. That's why you have a drill tower because you want to have a certain distance between your borehole with the end of this long drill tube and your drill engine where you can then put in this tube again. You could imagine that this leads to a lot of stress of this drill tube, especially if you drill down to a, le to a depth of like five kilometers or something. Just, uh, let's just for say, okay, we have like this five kilometers, which is already pretty deep, but uh, what, from what I read, read is that it's already like a, a depth that is common. If not, leave in the comment below if you know better. I'm curious to find out if you have some experience in that. But what I what I imagine my feeling is that turning, having an engine that is then turning this drill tube over five kilometers length, there is a lot of loss and this is not really efficient. And I would feel a lot better if we had the drill just 
focused on the tip of the drill and if we find a way how to have the engine and everything that is responsible for drilling is just on the tip and then you maybe have um, an energy supply down to it so the tubes are then only there to protect the the hole from collapsing and maybe you can even have the drill in a, some kind of way that it can when it drilled down for five kilometers it can collapse a little bit and then be pulled out through the tube so where where could this technology become from um you have the boring corporation the boring Inc. Boring, boring company. Yeah, boring company from Elon Musk, for example. He saw similar problem with tunnel drilling. So the tunnel drilling machines, they they drill, 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 and then they wait a little bit, have the segments built and set everything up again. They have to cool down, and then they drill, drill, drill again, and then build segments again to protect it from fall, the the tunnel from collapsing. They are running with, I think they are running with gas, so they need to be refueled or have like fuels line for running for the complete length of the tunnel. And they need, of course, also get the exhaust out of the tunnel and have ventilation and lots of that. So you have there are a lot of things where you can basically see, okay, the drilling machine is built for drilling. So every time the drilling stops, it's inefficient. You want to have it drilling in the constant speed as long as possible, as efficient as possible. So with the highest rate of progression forward for the amount of energy that you put in. That is the basically the gold uh, metric that you want to get out of a drilling machine because it's a drilling machine and not a stop and go drilling machine. So what Elon then sa said is we use electric engines and have it move constantly forward with, a, with then behind the machine a constant reinforcement of the tunnel in parallel to the forward movement of the machine. So And that was already enough to have it move forward a lot. Um, so something like this could be done with electric, maybe with electric motor that you have for the well drilling, you have maybe then a five kilometer long cable that goes down for an electric motor drilling machine down there so that you have everything there that you don't have to stop, for, for example, like right now where you have the drilling engine on top. It has to stop and put a new tube and then drill down it for five, six or ten meters and then disconnect again, put another tube in and then continue drilling. And of course this then the drill engine then runs <laughs> just from from the process already, runs like I don't know thirty percent efficient. Yeah. So just by improving the process. And looking at the process, you can see already that there is a lot of way for improvement. And yeah, if you go towards any technical problem in such a way that you see, oh, a machine, what it's, is its purpose and can it fulfill this purpose perfectly? And you see that it really can't. It, it's not really doing that. The drill is not drilling all the time. So there's potential. Uh, the car is not driving all the time, the ventilator is not ventilating all the time, and so on. Then you see that there's a lot of potential to improve a process. And for especially such big industries where the, yeah, the board of entry, the step to entry is very high, that's very old. For example, uh, just as a small excursion, I worked for a company that was producing technology for coking machines, which basically is producing coke out of coal for steel smelting. And they have technologies like uh, decades or maybe even a century old already. 
and there is a lot of potential because they are doing a lot of incremental changes so they improve the steps but there's not a big zooming out looking at okay what is uh, the outcome out of it input what we have this input we have that output and how can we put uh, the biggest leverage on the input to get the biggest output out of it and if you look at that in some ways then you can question uh, many technologies and i think that is also something what Elon Musk said is going back to the fundamentals and going back and what is the actual purpose of it so yeah leave in the comments maybe what kind of uh, technology you can think about that could be improved that doesn't really have lots of uh, improvements for the last decades and yeah leave a like subscribe if you want and download adblock so that i don't get money from ads yeah have a good time